We sit down with U.S. Senate candidates in this November's election starting this weekend. Tonight, we start with Democratic candidate Larry LaRocco. Thank you, Ashley. Well, over the next 30 minutes, we will be sitting down one-on-one -on -one with U.S. Democratic Senate candidate Larry LaRocco. He was a former representative in the 1st District in the U.S. House, served two terms from 1991 to 1995, January thereof. Uh, more recently, he ran for the Office of Lieutenant Governor against Jim Risch two years ago back in 2006. That, however, isn't the first time that he's waged a cam campaign against Mr. Risch. He waged a uh, state legislature campaign back in the 80s, 1986, I do believe, and ultimately lost. He's hoping to change that record now and showing that he's willing to work for the U.S. Senate seat that he's hoping to uh, attain from, from the current sitting U.S. Senator, Larry Craig. Thank you for joining us here today, Mr. LaRocco. Thank you. Ernie. Before we get to some of the issues, because yeah. I want this to be really issue driven, let's talk yeah. about you for just a minute. You're working, like I just said, for a, a campaign called Working for the U.S. Senate. Uh, it began about a year ago this month. Yes. Can you tell me a little about uh, your campaign? And it's a, it's a big difference from everyone else's thoughts of what a, a campaign should be? Well, Aaron, I've been taking jobs across the state of Idaho, uh, working a day at a time, shoulder to shoulder, side by side with Idahoans. I've had 25 jobs now. I, I had two jobs here in Bannock County and uh, uh, up in uh, uh, Bonneville County and also in uh, uh, Jefferson County. Uh, here in uh, Bannock County, I worked at the Beacon Hospital and Rehabilitation. I helped build a, a new IBEW facility working with union members. And uh, next week, I'm going to work at the Everton uh, Mattress uh, Company in Filer. But it's been a great journey. I've uh, uh, worked for Amalgamated Sugar. I've uh, uh, packed... Uh, cargo chutes for the smoke jumpers. I've uh, hauled uh, tires for recyclers and I've picked up garbage in Orofino and weighted tables up in Sandpoint. Uh, so it's been a, a very, very interesting journey and I work side by side with people and I listen to them and there's a great deal of wisdom in the break rooms across Idaho and they teach me a lot. Is that the significance of doing this kind of a campaign, going out and actually meeting with the people and hearing from them firsthand the issues that are important to them? Right, and nobody's ever done this before in Idaho politics, but it's an, uh, an opportunity for me to be immersed into a community, into a business, and into a work setting, and just talk to people and listen to them as we work side by side. And uh, it's amazing what you can pick up if you don't do all the talking. You can really uh, learn a lot just by listening. And healthcare is on so many people's mind and economic insecurity as they talk to me about the challenges that they face with the spiraling cost of health care and energy costs, uh, educating their kids and just uh, planning for retirement. Well, I can imagine we'll get to those yeah. issues here in just a second. But okay. first, uh, uh, you have managed to get some pretty high profile support among them. Former presidential candidate uh, General Wesley Clark. Yes. Clark said this about you earlier, quote, Larry is a seasoned, experienced leader who will bring the change we need to the U.S. Senate. He served with distinction not only in our military, but also in Congress. He can win this race. It is wide open, unquote. Also supporting you this past week, actually, you said that uh, Montana Senator John Tester also is lending you support. How important is that to have such high-profile names now supporting you for a what is deemed a a largely Republican state. Well, it's very important, actually, because uh, John Tester was an underdog in Montana. He came from behind to beat an incumbent. He's our neighbor. He understands the issues of uh, this region, and it's just great to have him on my side. Next week, uh, uh, former Governor Cecil Andrus and uh, the widow of Frank Church, Bethine Church, will also support me. So it's great to have uh, strong Idahoans like that. But mainly, I'm getting the, the endorsement of just working people and working families across the state. That's the endorsement that I really want of uh, those people. Real quick, and we are running out of time for the local portion or the, about you, but uh, one, you used to work for a company that did a lot of lobbying. Lobbying has been something that has been uh, in the news nationally for quite some time. Can you, what would you say, I guess, calm the voters' fears as they approach the, the polls this November that uh, your stance on lobbying and, and especially being the case that that's been in your background. Well, we've had some lobbying reform, which I totally support. We need transparency in that. And uh, also, I've seen the, the abuses uh, back in Washington, D.C. with uh, Abramoff and so forth. But the main thing is that I would tell the voters is that I want to be the lobbyist for Idaho. I want to be their person in Idaho, uh, back in Washington, D.C. And I think the most important message I can give is that I will work across party lines. I look forward to working with Mike Crapo in the United States Senate. We worked together in the House of Representatives when I was there and I look forward to working with him again. 
And recent ads that you've had on, on air lately have been attacking Jim Risch's recent television ads, claiming he's given the largest tax cut in, in decades here in the state of Idaho, <laughs> totaling up to about $200 million. Uh, Respond to that real quick for me. Well, Jim Rush should apologize to the people of Idaho for those ads. He didn't uh, put through a tax cut. He put through a tax shift. And he put the working people at the end of the line, not at the front of the line. He put the largest corporations at the front of the line for property tax relief. And he put uh, a 20% sales tax increase on the working families of Idaho and even on food and groceries. And so to claim that this is a tax cut is really uh, not right. It's a lie. It's deceptive. And he should apologize. And uh, I I think uh, it's disrespectful to the people of Idaho to say that. Talking specifics, you're talking about perhaps about his a uh, tax increase of five cents for sales tax to six cents and uh, other taxes that uh, he may have said, oh, we'll, we'll reduce here, but increase in other areas. Right. He did not have a tax cut. He had a tax shift. And there's a huge difference, and the people of Idaho know it. But he claims that it was a tax cut, and that's deceptive, and it was a lie, and he should apologize for it. It's very disrespectful to the people of Idaho to say that, especially when they got their groceries and their, their foods uh, taxed. Uh, most states don't even tax food, but uh, here he increased the tax on, on food, and that was wrong. All right. We have to take a quick uh, commercial break. When we return, we'll talk more issues with the U.S. Democratic Senate candidate Larry LaRocca. And welcome back. We wanted this to be a question and answer session today. We want to talk mostly about issues, and that's what we intend to do. So let's get right into that. Uh, dive right in. You know, as you mentioned earlier in our earlier block, you said that uh, Healthcare was an issue that uh, people have been bringing to you and saying yeah. that this is something we are most concerned about now. Uh, as a U.S. senator, if elected, that would be something that you would be overlooking. What have you been told, and what's I guess important to those yeah. viewers out there. Well, I have a health care plan up on my website, uh, Aaron, and, and uh, uh, Jim Risch does not have a health care plan up there, but I've looked into it, and uh, I want to go back to Washington, D.C., and see how close we can get to have universal health care in this country. This would be an American-based system, one that's already based on uh, our employer-based system, but one that would eliminate pre-existing conditions, one with that, uh, that would allow portability of health insurance from one employer to another, one that would center on prevention not allow the insurance companies to cherry pick just the young and the healthy and really drive the cost down by making sure that uh, we have uh, a, a very high tech system of uh, uh, medical records keeping and so forth. So it's a very detailed plan that I have on uh, the website. But here's what's happening in America is that people are essentially rolling the dice in Idaho. Uh, they're taking a chance because they're either declining health insurance or they're not getting it all in the workplace. 250,000 Idahoans don't have health insurance. 80% of whom work. So those people are waking up every day, they're playing by the rules, but they don't have the economic security of having that health insurance. So people are dealing with a great deal of economic insecurity. And I work with people in these jobs that I'm taking all over that don't have health insurance. I work with small businesses that can't afford to have them for, have health insurance for themselves or their uh, employees. I'm working with union members that are negotiating just for benefits, not wages. And I'm working with large companies that have already trimmed back the, uh, the benefits to the employees, families, and slowly, slowly getting, you know, uh, taking away the benefits for spouses and raising the co-pays and the deductibles. It's a system that's broke, and I think that uh, enough of us can reach across the aisle and get the job done. And I have a passion about that. You know, uh, and talking about reaching across the aisle, in a recent editorial, it was said, uh, I believe in Newser, talking about how if you got in into office. According to Jim Risch, that would be a throwaway vote because you'd vote one way and obviously Mike Crapo would perhaps vote another way as a Republican. Uh, how would you respond to that? Well, it's just not true. I mean, uh, we're going to vote for the, uh, the best interest of America, and uh, I'll be a member of the majority party. Mike Crapo and I have worked well together in the past, and I'll give you a perfect example. I voted against the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA. Uh, President Clinton, who was a Democrat when I was in the Congress, wanted me to vote for that. He pressured me hard to vote for NAFTA, and I said, no, I'm not going to vote for NAFTA. I don't believe that it's going to keep jobs in America. I think it's going to outsource jobs, and I don't think it's good for the working families of Idaho. And so it, uh, my vote is not just not going to a party. Here's the point. 
I'm not going to be elected to the Democratic Caucus of the United States Senate. I'm going to be elected to the United States Senate. So I'm going to go back there and meet every Republican senator I can. If they want to work with me for the betterment of Idaho and if they want to work with me for the betterment of this country, I'll get the job done with them. And that's really important because people across the state of Idaho in the break rooms tell me uh, that the system's broke and they want me to go back there and, and work across the aisle. And I'll do that. And health care, is that something that we can change overnight or is this something that's going to take years and, and a lot of hard work? Well, it's going to take some time, but it doesn't have to take a lot of time. I think that we can get this done uh, in uh, a Congress, in, in, in two sessions at least. And uh, all we need are people that want to uh, lock arms and walk down the path together. And if people don't agree with my health care, I want them to agree with my values, that the system is broke, and let's do this. Jim Risch said he doesn't have a health care plan. He said if his, he uh, did have a health care plan, it would be like uh, John McCain's. Well, let me summarize John McCain's health care plan in three words. Don't get sick. That's it. It's a trickle-down approach, and I think that we can get the job done. I really do. And uh, I think Americans are waiting for us to do this, and they're very frustrated that Congress has not acted. One thing that came up on Meet the Press, an NBC uh, uh, program, was Hillary Clinton's plan. It came up that she kind of wanted to almost force people into health care, right. even if they can or cannot afford it. Your stance on that? Well, I think that uh, it was not a good plan. And I was in Congress at the time, and I was focused on rural health care and telemedicine and other things that would help serve uh, underserved areas uh, with health care. And I didn't support her plan there. It had mandates, and uh, it was based on regional uh, co-ops and so forth. It was a plan that was just uh, destined for disaster. But I think that we have a new approach. I think my plan is a better plan than, than Hillary Care, quite frankly. And I think that uh, we can take elements of mine, and I'll fight for those and other people will have their ideas but doing nothing is not an option anymore it's causing just too much economic insecurity too many people are rolling the dice most of the bankruptcies in this country are now based on uh, health care related uh, uh, non-payments and that's not the America that I think we want okay we have to take a real break a uh, real quick break real quick but when we come back we'll talk about the Iraq war and his views on that after the break And welcome back now to the ongoing war efforts in Iraq, making headlines earlier this week, the approval of the House of a $162 billion funding bill to support the U.S. operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. Next week, it goes before the Senate, the same body that Mr. LaRocco will sit if elected this November. First of all, let's get your uh, opinion or your feelings on the Iraq war as it sits. Well, uh, Idahoans are tired of this war. It's gone on far too long. We all support the troops, and we need to bring them home as soon as we can. Uh, we have to do it in a humanitarian way, in a safe way. Uh, but we have to let the Iraqis know that the credit card is going to be cut off and that uh, the time is going to be up uh, very shortly. We need a surge of diplomacy in the region. And I really criticize the administration for not accepting the recommendations of the Iraq study group. I'm a veteran. I served during the Vietnam War. I didn't serve in Vietnam, but I had a uniform on from 1969 to 72. I was a captain in military intelligence, and I know that uh, these wars go on far too long. This is a $3 trillion war now, Aaron. It's going to cost us and our grandkids, and uh, we need to end it and uh, bring our troops home very, very soon. When you say soon, do you mean pull them out immediately, or is this a kind of a phased? It's going to have down? to be phased. It, uh, there's no question about it. Uh, uh, you just can't uh, take the uh, the troop ships in there and, and pull everybody out immediately because you've got to move uh, the troops into garrisons and you've got to protect those in certain areas. But uh, we need to have a plan for withdrawal. We have no plan for withdrawal right now, and uh, we've only had a surge, which is really an escalation. And uh, so we need an administration and a Congress that will lock arms together together on a plan for withdrawal. That's all we need. And when we do that, we'll do it with the military commanders on the ground. We'll do it with our allies and we'll do it with uh, folks in the region and, and do it in the right way. But we need to have a plan for withdrawal. Talking about military, uh, Senator Larry Craig s sat and for a very, very long time on the Veterans Affairs Committee. Yes. Uh, that is something he has felt very strongly about. Uh, would that be something you'd be interested in? And, and do you feel that that's 
something that would benefit the state of Idaho and for that matter the rest of the nation. Absolutely. Uh, we can't do enough for our veterans. I support uh, Jim Webb's GI Bill for education that he has that would uh, allow uh, GIs, uh, men and women coming back from serving three years in the service to have tuition paid at the highest level that uh, state supported institutions have. The administration opposes this. John McCain opposes it. I support it and I think it's a very important bill and I'm a veteran as I mentioned and uh, I would love to serve on serve on the Veterans Committee, but I'd also love to serve on Armed Services or the Intelligence Committee and also Energy and Commerce. And uh, I have a background in financial services and I'd like to serve on the Banking Committee as well. That was going to be my next question. Oh, okay. So uh, we'll break. We have to take another break <laughs> real you. quick. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. We'll be right back after the break. All right, and we are back. Let's talk about some uh, energy policy here right now. Let's just get quickly your oversight of energy policy here in the U.S. and where you'd like to see it uh, if you're elected. Basically, we don't have an energy policy in this country right now, and that's been a big problem. The energy policy that we do have was uh, done by Dick Cheney and behind closed doors with the largest uh, uh, you know, oil and gas co companies in the, uh, in the country and in the world. And I think that's been wrong. So we need to roll up our sleeves, work across the aisle, and make sure that we get it right this time. And I want to serve on the Energy and, and uh, Natural Resources Committee and be part of that. I have uh, put out a detailed uh, position paper uh, on uh, all alternative sources of energy. Here in Idaho, this is so exciting, Aaron, what we can do in Idaho. We can create a, just a new industry in this uh, state and provide good jobs for Idahoans and our kids and our grandkids on alternative sources of energy. We have huge potential for solar, geothermal, wind, biomass, biofuels like they're developing in Shelley, and also nuclear power to use the brain trust that we have at the Idaho National Lab to, to really solve our energy uh, independence question here. We can get on with it. We need a Manhattan-style project. We need nation building in this country, not just in Iraq. We need to spend the efforts here. But here in Idaho, we have really unique opportunities that I want to be part of for the future because we can keep our kids here and uh, we can uh, provide a strong economic base. And it's here, the sun, the geothermal uh, uh, opportunities and the resources. I worked at U.S. Geothermal out in Malta to learn more about that. And uh, biofuels is very important. Biomass up in northern Idaho as well because uh, the job uh, loss has been terrific up there. And we could use uh, uh, the fuels right out of the uh, forest there for a, a very strong biomass project. It's very exciting. Gasoline has topped $4 a gallon. What can be done about that? And I know a lot of people are, are really attentive to this because now it's getting increasingly harder to, to buy right. enough gas to even get to work. Right. Well, th I hear about this all the time. First of all, the large deficits that have been created by this administration are create, have created a weak dollar. The weak dollar has led to a 20 percent uh, increase in a barrel of oil. So if we balance a the budget, then we'll strengthen the dollar and we could uh, uh, make up some of the ground there. The other thing is that I think we have to look at our refinery capacity in this country. We haven't had uh, any new refineries. We've had expansion. We need to see if we should expand that. The other thing is we need to have a plan so that we know, uh, need to know where we should be drilling, if at all. And and, and conservation has to be part of that. Obviously, we've seen that our behavior has changed somewhat uh, since uh, we, we hit $4 uh, a gallon. But here in Idaho, we don't have the mass transit system that many parts of the country do. So our options are limited, and we have to deal with that. And uh, I want to see uh, us have the right biofuels uh, uh, strategy as well. And we have to take a quick, uh, very good look at ethanol to make sure that it's not costing us more and hurting us uh, just because we got uh, very excited about that on the way to $4 uh, uh, oil. So, so do you support domestic drilling? Places like Anwar, the Antarctic... National Wildlife Refuge. Well, at, at the moment, I don't because we don't have an energy plan. We don't have part of, uh, you know, that's a Band-Aid uh, for if, if we think that we're going to do that just to get through the next 10 years, then that's not really an energy plan. But we should be looking at offshore drilling or more drilling in, uh, uh, in the uh, internal parts of the United States to see uh, where those leases are and where we can do it environmentally uh, safe. And let's come together on this thing. But let's not do it in a piecemeal manner. And that's been the problem, is that we haven't really had a policy. And this is what is frustrating the American people in Idaho and that people haven't come together on this type of thing. But uh, we were deluding ourselves that we thought that 
we were going to have a dollar fifty or two dollar uh, gallon uh, uh, gas for right. a long, long time. And so the rubber has hit the road on the demand side. Of course, India and China are really driving up the cost. The other thing where I want to take a look is I want to take a look at the speculators in this market and see what impact they're having. And I, I just want to say that Jim Rich is taking money from Exxon and Chevron. And how can he ask the tough questions if he goes to the Senate when he's already taking money from them? I think we need an independent voice that goes back there and they can ask the tough questions. Hold them accountable. You All bet. Right. We'll be right back. Okay. And welcome back. Not a lot of time left, but uh, let's talk about the debates. Sure. Are you willing to debate uh, on a statewide scale? I am. Uh, the League of Women Voters every year or every election has a statewide live debate and uh, I'll be there. I challenged Jim Rich to be there. He ducked it in the primary in 2008. He ducked it in the general in 2006. I think he ought to be there and uh, let's ask him if he's going to be there. I give you my commitment right now. I'll be there at the statewide debate. Fantastic. Yeah. Also, uh, about a month ago, some controversy over nuclear waste coming back here in the United States over from Kuwait. Yeah. Uh, tell me your stance? And well, it was depleted uh, uranium, very hot uh, radioactive waste, and they shipped it from Kuwait over here. Aaron, I think we should have dug a hole in the desert. We should have lined it. And we should have kept that uh, 6,700 tons of radioactive waste in uh, Kuwait and just capped it there. I don't think we should be importing that waste here, and uh, I'll work in uh, the United States Senate to make sure it doesn't happen. There are actually bills to stop the importation of, of that type of waste. All right. Thank you very much for being here with us. Oh, I appreciate you. it. You think you can win? Yes, I do. Yeah, I'm right. on the track to win. There's a clear path to victory. All right. Thank you very much. That's going to do it for us. We'll see you back here tonight at 10.